Hey guys, welcome to Flow Themes. It's Mark here, and today we're going to talk about using the Flow Forms plugin and how to set that up on your site correctly. Um, so we'll get started. Uh, to get the plugin, you can go ahead and go to Flow Plugins, and uh, you'll be able to download the plugin here. So go ahead and download uh, the Flow Forms plugin, and uh, once you have that downloaded, uh, then you will be able to log in to your WordPress site. Uh, once you do that, uh, it's the same process as always. You can go to plugins, add new plugin, and then once you add that, um, upload it. So we'll go to add, add new plugin and then choose the upload option. So add new. And then you would select upload. And then it's just a matter of choosing choosing the file that you've downloaded. Install now, and then once it's done, just activate the plugin. Now, with that done, you can head over to uh, Flow Forms, and this will be the area that you can uh, control and manage all of your forms. And there are a few different options here on the left, and there's all forms that shows all of the forms available, add new form, uh, and that's also up here. That's just to create a new form, and then you have entries. So that will be uh, all the submissions from your contact forms. So whenever someone goes and makes an entry, uh, it will show up here and uh, you'll be able to see and track all of those uh, details from the user. So whenever you go into a single form, um, you can see what they have said. So it's, it's really good um, for tracking your submissions. It's also great if there's an issue with your hosting or your server or your uh, mail settings and it doesn't send, it will actually be stored on your website uh, and in your database, so there's not really any problems with that. So let's get started. If we want to add a new form, we'll just go ahead and click Add New Form. And in here we have a number of options. So the first thing you'll always want to do is add your label, so the contact. And then you'll see there's add fields, and that was, gives you the option to add a field to the form. We have the field settings, and that will be the settings for any of the said fields. So if you've added a field, you click field, um, go to field settings, choose an option, then you'll have all the options for that. And then finally, you have the uh, form settings. This is the uh, form and word, or the overall settings for this single form. Each form can be different. So you want to go ahead and add your email email here in form settings. And then you, you can have your subject line. You can set that to whatever you like. I'll come back to that later to show you a little trick so that uh, the forms are not going all under one email thread. You also have a few options here for the number of columns. So you can select one or two. If you have two columns, you can set fields left and right. And that is pretty useful for creating those longer field forms. You can actually do it um, whenever we add the fields, but I'll also show you that as well. And you can choose the label placement left top or right aligned. So we usually leave them as top as default. And then you also have the option for the thank, welcome message to thank you, or you can redirect to any page that you have created. So let's go ahead and add some fields. First, I'm going to add the text field. And again, I'll just click that and you can see it immediately goes to the field settings area. And we also have a field ID and we can go back to that later. And I'll show you what I use that for. So for example, I'm going to use name. And here you can add name, it could be full name, for example. If, for example, you just wanted to have text within the form just here, so that it's not showing above, um, you don't have, you can just remove the field label like so, and just add the details in the, in the field placeholder. But for now, I'm just going to add uh, the details as normal. Again, as I mentioned, there is a way to select the width, and you can set it to 50%. And if you do that, you'll be able to actually set two items side by side as well. So you can do full width or 100%. For now, I'll just do 100% for this one, and we will have one with 50% lower down. Now you can also add a CSS class if you want to style it yourself and you don't have a little bit of CSS knowledge. You can then finally set the required field if you want it to be required. I'll say yes for this one. And you can see there's a little star beside that. And you can set a default value. So if, you, if for example, you wanted to set uh, a tester value here, my name, et cetera, et cetera, you can add that um, as standard in there. Next, I'm going to add an email field. 
And again, this is usually a required one as well, so I'm just going to click required. I'm just going to go ahead back and I'm going to add uh, a single line text. And this time I'm going to label this one as subject. And then I'm going to make it 50%. I'm going to also add the uh, date option. And again, I'm going to make that 50%. percent i just make them all required. Finally, I'm just going to add a, um, well, let me just go through them all. The checkbox will allow you to set a number of options for your uh, users. So they can select one, two, or three um, options, which is great if you want to um, ask them various questions, what are you interested in, maybe it's your services, and you want them to be able to select more than one option. And you can use radio buttons if you want them to select only a singular option. Um, so maybe that is, um, what is your, your favorite color, for example, and they just select one. Uh, then you can also have a drop down again. Uh, this is the same principle as the radio buttons, and it will just give you a drop down option. So you can add a number of choices here as well. So Maybe this is, again, similar to before, what, what services do you require? Then they can just select the singular option. Uh, we can also have a section break, and that will just give a break in the form. Um, I prefer not to use these. Um, they're usually for more complicated forms. And you also have hidden fields and paragraph text. So hidden fields are great if you're using uh, some integration uh, like Tabby or StreetQ and uh, you want to add a hidden field uh, to put in some information um, that you know about the client. So whether that is every submission will be a wedding or um, some other hidden fields that are available with um, those uh, partners, you can select those. So again, they're great. And in this case, you just add the default value and that's the value that is passed through into the form. So for this uh, tutorial, we won't really need that. Uh, we can also add paragraph text and again, uh, you can say, well, let me know about your plan, for example. And then you can give some details again in the placeholder. And uh, finally, you can set a height to that. Um, if you want to have it a specific height for styling purposes, uh, you can go ahead and do so. So once you've done that, you've set up your form, you've selected all the uh, field setting options and you have set up the form settings with your email and then the subject line. And you may want to actually uh, modify the subject line so that uh, you do not uh, have a stack of emails under the same area. So what I always do for users, I tend to use either their email address or their name. And whenever you go to the, the field settings for that specific field, so you can see there's a field ID. So I'm just going to copy the one for name. And then I'm going to go back to field settings, and then I'm going to go to the email subject. So a new message from, and then I'm going to add the field ID, and I'm going to wrap it in percentage sense. And with that, it knows to pass the information from the name field um, into the email subject line. So that's really great, again, for splitting up those emails. And then I'll, I'll usually say from uh, Mark Bell contact form, for example. So again, you can do that with any of these if you want to make it slightly different. You could add the date, etc., to the email subject um, to give you more customized uh, email entries. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this form. And once the form is saved, you will now have a short code. So you can see it at the bottom here, the flow short code. Uh, you can actually also see it if you go to all forms. You will also have the option for that as well. So you can see here we have the short code. So now I'm going to add this to the page. So just go to uh, your contact page, or any page, widget, um, post, or area that you would like to add it. Uh, go ahead and edit the page. And then um, if you're using uh, one of our page templates or one of our newer themes, you can just go to the layout section. Um, and if you have uh, an older theme, you will have a section with the options below. It will be called out, but it will be content page settings whenever you select the template. And within your template, you have a block for content form. So you just go ahead and modify that. Um, and you can choose then the custom short code and just add that to the form. Now with that added, I want to go ahead and update the page. And 
And then you can go ahead and view the page and look at the contact form that is available. So as you can see, I've added the contact form, name, email, subject, date. You can select the date. You can select any choices that you want. Again, this one you can select multiple. This one you can select a singular. And then some details. And any subject. So once you fill out the details, we always recommend a common texture form. So go ahead and just make sure that it's working. Click send. Then you should see there's a thank you message. With that, I know that the, the email is uh, working. There's no issues with actually sending it from WordPress, which is great. Um, if, for example, that you don't get the submission, uh, there is one. You can go ahead and you can check the entries here and just make sure that it has gone through. So as you can see, I've got a new entry and it is on red. It is marked there. And we will keep this on red until you have um, seen the uh, email. And we have a pixel that will be able to track that for you. And a little, a little trick for you. So we'll just go to the, uh, the global settings for Flowform. So Flowform settings tab here. And in the Flowform settings tab, you'll see there are a number of options. Enable the email reminder if there are unread entries, which is, and I always keep this to yes, and it will send it to this email address at the bottom, and it will tell you how long it, uh, how long before it sends the message to you. So I usually keep it to one day, so 24 hours. If you're traveling, and you want it to be a little bit longer, and you can send it to a longer date, up to 10 days. And you also have the option to enable plain text instead of an HTML form, in case you're using some older style um, email provider. And then finally, you have enable reply to email header. And with that, that gives you the option to uh, click sim simply click reply whenever the message comes into your inbox. And it will automatically add that user's email to the uh, emails uh, area. However, this does cause some issues for uh, a lot of users. And on occasions, it will mean that your emails get blocked by your server or go straight to your spam folder. And this is simply because uh, your hosting provider or server may deem the email as spam because it sees that the email is trying to be generated from uh, a different email address because the reply to header uh, has, is keeping the information from uh, the email of the client. So hopefully that's not too complicated. Generally, I would suggest to keep it as no uh, for your own sanity. Uh, whenever you do get an email in, simply click reply, copy the person's email, and just go ahead and put it into the email section. That's usually the best option. So you can go ahead and save those options and that will uh, give you a nice new form. So as mentioned, uh, you can uh, you can build anything with these forms and uh, with the available options, there's quite a number of ways to do that. Um, we do recommend using a little uh, three or four fields whenever you're just trying to collect some simple emails. Uh, if you've been in business a bit longer and you want to filter your clients a little bit more, then actually it's, it's a good option to build a longer type form um, so that you are starting to filter those clients out to those who really want you and you're able to collect better information for those. Um, so hopefully that uh, makes it easier, guys, for you to set up your flow forms. Uh, if you have any questions, drop us a comment below. And hopefully you guys have some fun setting up your flow form.